The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the chief priests and elders of the people, What is your opinion? A man had two sons. He came to the first and said, Son, go out and work in the vineyards today. He said in reply, I will not. But afterwards changed his mind and went. The man came to the other son and gave the same order. He said in reply, Yes, sir, but did not go. Which of the two did his father's will? They answered, the first. Jesus said to them, Amen, I say to you, tax collectors and prostitutes are entering the kingdom of God before you. When John came to you in the way of righteousness, you did not believe him. But tax collectors and prostitutes did. Yet even when you saw that, you did not later change your minds and believe him. My brothers and sisters in Christ, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good evening again, my brothers and sisters in Christ. No, I'm not a father. I don't get paid. <laughs> But thank you. I thank Father Jerry and you all for allowing me to come back. Uh, just want you to know I always keep my car keys close in case I see somebody about to throw a tomato at me or something and I run out the side door. In the gospel reading today, our Lord asks the question of which son did the will of the Father? The one who said he would not go into the field but eventually did. Or the one who say he would go, but never arrive there. My brothers and sisters, this is very crucial to each and every one of us, especially us, whether you're Catholic or not. You've been baptized. When you were baptized, you told the Lord that you gave up yourself freely to him that you will no longer follow the lies of Satan, that you will be used as an instrument of his grace and his mercy. The question is, are you talking the talk and walking the talk? Are you preaching and doing what you preach? Or are you one of those type of Catholics who I call them the American Express Catholics. They don't never go home or away without their card. They quick to tell you I'm a Catholic. They quick to tell you they go to church on every Sunday. But when it comes to the defense of the church, the defense of justice, the defense of the teaching of the church, they're nowhere to be found. In the first reading, Ezekiel was told by the Lord that anyone, anyone who followed the Lord, anyone who run the race in righteousness will be rewarded. To put it plain, plainly, it's like this here in the first reading. There are people in the world who run the good race. They are very righteous. But sooner or later, at the very end, they commit a grave sin. And because of that grave sin, without any repentance, they condemn themselves to hell. Then there are those that live the good life, who had it good all their lives and were privileged with everything. They were having a wonderful time. In fact, they're sitting at the table with Satan and enjoying everything and caring about nobody but for some reason they changed their evil ways 
They start following and listening to the voice of the Lord, and they are saved. And what did Ezekiel first reading says? We say, that is not fair. After all, would he or she have done, and here they're going to get a free ticket into heaven? Lord, you are not fair. Who are you or me to know the will and the mind of the Lord? When grace and mercy is what the Lord is all about. When Jesus came down here to earth, he didn't come down here for those who've already been saved. He came for the one who needed saving. You can live a life of debauchery or whatever you want to, but at the end, judgment will be rendered to you. We pray that we change our ways. You can easily talk the game and say, I'm sorry, but the Lord looks deep in your heart and he knows if you mean what you say. In the second reading, St. Paul said basically the same thing. Christ is our model. We are supposed to follow Christ. We're supposed to empty ourselves. We're supposed to care for one another, about our community, about the world. We are not supposed to be on this earth to enjoy the pleasures of this earth. Everything that we have and we have received from the Lord is to help us on this journey as we spread the gospel message of his son Jesus Christ about grace and mercy. And now we come to the gospel message. Jesus, the great psychiatrist, the great healer, Jesus, you know, he knew human behavior. Some of us act just like those two sons. The first one, we know, most of us, me too, we sit around and then we having a good time and then when somebody requests a favor or something that we know we need to do, we say, uh-uh, I ain't going to do it. Little Timothy, take out the trash. Nah, I ain't going to do it like Sylvia do it. Nah, I'm not going to do that. If you look at the gospel message, do you actually think that the father allowed him to get away with that? I think the father challenged him. I think the father told him something like this. Wait just a minute. You got a cushiony job. We own the vineyard. All I want you to do is go out there and supervise, make sure everything is going right. If you don't do this after all I've done for you, feed you, clothe you, took care of you, after all I've done for you, guess what, there won't be no cable TV or cell phone tonight. You're not going to get this and you're not going to get that. No, I'm still not going, but later on, I think the son in that old medieval way said to himself, well, you know what? Dad is right. And besides, back in those days, during that time period, the father is honored. The father, you don't talk back to the father. When the father gave a command, it was supposed to be done. The son, at least, he changed his mind. He converted, and he went ahead, and he did what his father told him to do. Just think, after he got through talking to the first son, he went to the second one. Oh, he's my favorite. She's my favorite. Anything I tell her to do or he do, they do it. Sylvia, I know some of you say that was two sons, but hey, I'm just mixing it up. <laughs> Sylvia, will you please wash the dishes? Yes, Mom, I sure will. One hour goes by. Two hours go by, mama comes in, the dishes haven't been done. Mama look at the daughter and say, why have this not been done? Oh, uh, 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 here you're talking to a teenager whose attention span is very short. This is the same teenager, if you were to go into her email, you'll see there are 4,000 something emails that are just running and she's never responded. I know, I see my wives and friends and other ones. Uh, ladies, I'm not trying to say y'all do that, but 
uh, they have about 4,000 emails. And I said, when are you going to clean this up? Oh, one day. That day took years. What is the gospel trying to tell us? The gospel message is challenging us. It is trying to tell us that when you became a Catholic, a Baptist, a Methodist, or whatever your method of baptism was, you pledged allegiance to the Father. Now, I like the first son. The first son represents what we all are. Sometimes we don't want to do it, but sometimes something inside us tells us, but you know that issue is wrong. You know you need to do something about this. And eventually we change our minds and we do it. The second son who represent those people in the world, I try to avoid them as much as possible. These are the people that dash your dreams, dash your hope. Have you ever been with somebody you had a very good conversation with and you're kicking it, you understand each other, and you say to yourself, I think he or she will be just the one that I need. And they come back to you, you come back to them, and you introduce yourself, and they look as if they don't know you at all. Or maybe the one that you do, do know, and they disappoint you. They disappoint you and they hurt you. Those are the kind of people Christ don't need. The church don't need. Family don't need. We need people to say yes is yes, no is no. Father Jerry, he let me hear some of the planning that he had with other priests. And he says something about, it's hard to, to get them together. They're just like cats. Meow. Some will and some didn't. He said, just say yes and just say no. Make it plain and make it simple. We're looking at this world now. All of us are at this age. I assume all of us in here, with the exception of the children, and some of our young adults between 20 and 30, I'm talking about people between maybe 50 to 60 years older. You have seen things, you have seen issues that have not been addressed and swept under the rug, and now it is just exploding in our face. Why? Because the issues of our time was never addressed, and deep down inside your heart, you know it is wrong. It is wrong about the abortion. It is wrong about systemic racism. It is wrong about people who goes around and take away from those who have nothing. It's wrong to have so much of privileges, and yet you don't want to even share these privileges with others. The gospel message is teaching us about humility, how to humble ourselves, so that we can help others. St. Paul says that we are not supposed to be about ourselves. We're supposed to empty ourselves. I'm proud to be a practicing Catholic. I'm not proud of being a Catholic. Because see, a Catholic, as I mentioned, is American Express card. We walk around, we go to church on Sunday, we give good tithes, but we don't do anything afterwards. A practicing Catholic is out there beating the bush. He or she is saying to himself, this is wrong. I need to address this. And while they are addressing their, their sons, their daughter, their grandchildren are saying, where to go, mom? Where to go, dad? You building up the next future generation, a social, spiritual activist. The gospel message, my brothers and sisters, is about loving and serving the Lord and answering the call. Have you answered the call? It's not too late. It is not too late, no matter what. I don't want to stand up and sound like some of those Baptist ministers, you know, some of them that get up there and they're screaming hard and say, come to the altar, it's not too late. But I will say this, come to the altar and receive the Eucharist. Go to confession. 
Look at yourself in the mirror sometimes in the morning, at night, or when you go to bed and ask yourself, how did your day go? What did you do or did not do today? Some of my Protestant brothers and sisters, I ask them the question, what do you do when you go to bed at night? They say, well, I, I just, uh, you know, take care of the kids and, I, and get in the bed and I thank the Lord and I hope he take care of everything and I wake up in the morning. I'm proud to tell them, I say, we do a little bit better than that. For some of us who practice the faith, I say, I get on my knees and I say, thank the Lord I made it. And Lord, did I hurt anybody today? Did I overlook somebody today? Lord, let me live through the night so tomorrow I can ask for your forgiveness. That I'm sorry I walked past you. I'm sorry I did not give more. I'm sorry I did not listen. And then if God grant me the favor to wake up that morning, no matter what I have planned, I pray that whoever it is I have offended, I will go to them and say, I'm sorry. Because I may not wake up. Does that make them bad? No. God will judge him or her any way it takes. God is always going to say, did you love? So my brothers and sisters in Christ, continue to ask yourself the question, are you working in the vineyards? Are you standing up to social justice that the church preaches and have been preaching for over 1,600 years with this document? Are you Christ? Amen.